What's up guys, it's Ryan here, and welcome this guide to one cycling the Ambassador with all three combat styles. This guide assumes that you either know the mechanics of the Ambassador or are at least somewhat familiar with the boss fight. I've linked a beginner Ambassador guide down in the description, and I'd strongly recommend watching that video before watching this one. A table of contents has been listed in the description down below. One cycling is a term used to describe phasing the Ambassador to 550,000 life points with only one set of spinners. Doing this requires both high tier gear and good rotations. For this guide, I will be using max gear, but I will not be using DPS auras such as Berserker, Maniacal, and Reckless. This will be difficult to do with gear under tier 90, although tier 92 is definitely not needed. One cycling the ambassador will allow you to get between 5 and 6 minute kills very easily. Outside of saving you some time, there's no real benefit to this, and if you lack a lot of the gear or other requirements for this, you can just as easily apply the same strategies and go for a 2 cycle. In terms of recommendations, bring the best DPS gear you've got in whichever combat style you would like, I'll be using all three in this video. I'd also recommend using Quorum and Spiritweed Incense Sticks with both Weapon Poison++ plus plus, as well as some summoning flasks. The more you can get your titan specking, the less damage you'll have to do out of your rotation to phase in time. That's enough preamble for this one, I'm going to go through each combat style and explain some tips and tricks to my rotations. My ability tracker will also be on for everything I'm doing, so you can follow along there too. It's worth noting these rotations are in no way optimal. The goal here is a one cycle and not to cycle it as quickly as humanly possible. So I'm very aware that my rotations are not completely perfect, there are lots of ticks missed, there are lots of surges that are late, there are lots of things that are a little bit wrong, but in each three of these instances I got a clean, easy one cycle without a DPS aura and there weren't any close calls either. Each time I was able to do between 20 and 40,000 damage more than I needed to one cycle it, so if that's what the goal is, these rotations will work. When I'm using magic, I prefer to be on the ancient spellbook. I'm spellbook swapping to vulnerability, and the main reason I'm doing this is so that I've got access to disruption shield. Disruption shield allows me to block a lot of incoming damage, which in turn means my stats aren't brewed down for as long, which means I I can deal more damage. You can do this no problem without Disruption Shield and without Ancients, but in my experience it makes it easier. I'm gonna Disruption Shield the first magic attack, so I'm just gonna leave Range Prey on. After that, I'm gonna Vuln the boss, and I'm gonna Sunshine as soon as I possibly can. The goal for the Sunshine rotation is to get two Wild Magics, two Asphyxiates, as well as a Guthic Staff Special in the middle. The first smoke is about to drop, and I'm actually gonna edge my Sunshine instead of leaving it entirely. This way I can keep my damage boosted for all the abilities I'm doing in there. After that, I'm going to walk back into the safe side and I'm going to use impact on the black hole. The main goal for this first ultimate is to get as much damage on the boss as possible, so the less moving around I'm doing, the better off I'm going to be. I'm also using disruption shield and vengeance on the magic attack. If disruption shield is available, I'm using that, and if not, I'm either going to flick the magic prey or I'm going to use vengeance. Now that I'm no longer in my sunshine, the goal is to dump as much damage onto the boss as I possibly can with thresholds as well as an auto attack gothic staff special. To get a 2H auto it with your Guthic Staff spec, put on your two-handed weapon, auto attack, then use the Guthic Staff special, and then swap back to your dual wields. Now it's spinner time. I'm building up to full, and I'm going to use Metamorphosis. This is going to make it a lot easier for me to clear the first five spinners, although if you're on Maniacal Aura, this is completely unnecessary. You can Ice Rack, or you can just use Thresholds and Basics to get them down, no problem at all. You'll also notice I haven't used my summoning flasks up to this point, that is a mistake. You want to be using them as often as you can, and it likely cost me a good amount of damage on the first phase of the Ambassador. Now, because I've got Disruption Shield that I can use to losslessly block one Shockwave attack, I'm not attacking the last spinner. Instead, I'm applying a Vulnerability on the boss, and then I'm going to charge a Detonate. This really helps, especially if you're prone to missing by a small amount of damage. As soon as the boss becomes attackable and launches the first attack, you can release an Auto, Detonate, and then a Wild Magic. As soon as I've been hit by one range attack, I'm going to use Disruption Shield, and that will block the Shockwave. Now that the Shockwave has been dealt with, I'm going to use my Bleeds that will not gain any damage by being in a Sunshine to build all the way up to full. Once I'm full Adrenaline, I'm simply going to go through a proper Sunshine rotation, which should look identical to the first Sunshine rotation. I'm going to edge it in the exact same way, so I'm not running out of it at any point, and I'm just hitting the boss as hard as I possibly can. In this instance, I was able to phase it within my Sunshine rotation, but you will have quite a bit of extra time at the end of your Sunshine if you need a little more damage. You should be able to get off another Wild Magic, Asphyxiate, as well as one or two auto attack Guthic Staff combos. I was able to get it to 550,000 life points earlier than I even needed to. If I'd messed up my rotation or had lower hits, I was able to deal about 30,000 more damage than I needed to get the phase point, which is enough that it should be consistent every single time, regardless of how much damage I'm dealing. Because the magic and range rotations are very similar, I've sped things up slightly. When we look at melee, I'll slow it back down to the regular speed. Similar to the magic setup, I'm edging my death swiftness, and I'm going through a death swiftness rotation that is hopefully going to get two snapshots, two rapid fires, and a tendrils in it. You'll see that I am using shadow tendrils even though there is some incoming damage, and I use my Excalibur special shortly afterwards to make up for it. You'll also see that I'm using Ruby but Criminal Bolts, and I'm using an Ingenuity of the Humans to Vuln. You want to Vuln at the start of the first phase, as well as after the first set of spinners. 
Once my death swiftness is up, I'm not going to be using any special attack weapons. I'm just going to offload as many thresholds as I can on the boss. When I get to the spinner phase, you'll notice that I've done the exact same amount of damage as I was able to do with magic. For the spinner phase, I'm going to be swapping to Hydrix Procriminal Bolts as I like the extra adrenaline, and I'm going to be using the Eldritch Special Attack to clear the first five spinners very easily. If you don't have an Eldritch Special Attack, it's still very easy to clear five spinners, although if you're having any issues, you can either use the Reckless Aura or use a couple sips of your Summoning Flask. Now that my five spinners have been taken out, before the boss is attackable, I'm going to activate my Ingenuity of the Humans, and I'm going to cast Vulnerability on the boss for the second time. As soon as I've been hit by the first range attack, I'm going to activate Disruption Shield to block the Shockwave, and then I'm going to Death Swiftness right away. At this point it's all about doing the exact same rotation we did before and it's all about getting to the phase HP. You'll notice that I've swapped back to the Ruby of the Criminal Bolts and I'm also guzzling my summoning flask as I wasn't sure if I'd have enough damage. Turns out I was worried for no reason, and we phased it with a little extra time to spare. Now we're going to take a look at the melee rotation, which is the one I have done more than any other combat style. I've literally done this 150 times, so I would expect my melee rotations will be a little more polished than my rotations with ranged or with magic. I'm going to use Berserk, I'm going to Mutated Barge the boss, and then I'm going to Adrenaline Potion while Ingenuity the Humans vulning the boss. I'm then going to use one more basic and then apply my Assault as a bleed. I'm going to finish off this Berserk Rotation with a Destroy, as well as two hits of a Mutated Flurry. When you're in a Berserk Rotation, you want to prioritize Assault, and then Destroy, and then Mutated Flurry, whereas when you're outside of a Berserk Rotation, the strongest ability you have in your arsenal is Dismember with a Strength Cape, as well as a Lunging Switch. I do not move at all for the first smoke, and I let it spawn underneath me. The first hits are extremely low, and then I'm going to step out of the smoke to continue attacking the Ambassador from the other side. I'm going to apply Azara's Godsword Special, and then I'm going to Blade a Dive to the Black Hole and use Backhand on it. This is where I'm going to do some waiting. I'm going to use the Anticipate ability, and then I'm going to follow it up by rezzing the magic hit. That's going to give me enough time to charge up my Mutated Barge, and then I'm going to barge back onto the Ambassador, and then apply my Assault as a Bleed, followed by my Destroy. I'm going to continue to prioritize my 188% basic abilities, as well as Dismember with the Lunging Perk. Now for this final smoke, I'm not going to drop it directly on top of myself. I'm actually going to escape back and place it out of harm's way. At this point, I'm going to get back on the boss. I'm going to make sure to use an Auto Attack, and then two abilities before phasing it. I was able to do 20,000 more damage with melee than I was with major ranged, and that's likely just due to practice effects. Like I said before, I've done this a lot more. Heading into the spinners, you guys probably know the drill. I'm going to use Berserk, I'm going to Soul Split, and I'm going to clear the first five spinners. Instead of targeting the sixth and final spinner, I'm going to use my Ingenuity of the Humans to apply another vulnerability on the boss. Once the boss is vulned, I'm going to wait for the first range attack to hit me, I'm going to use Vengeance on it, and then for the second attack, I'm going to use Disruption Shield. As soon as I've disrupted the Shockwave attack, I'm going to use Berserk as soon as possible. I won't be getting a mutated barge buff in this instance, although if you wanted to, you could wait and get it very easily. Now, for this first smoke, I'm actually not going to surge it away. Similar to my first Berserk rotation, I'm going to let it drop directly on top of me, but I'm going to be mindful of where I place it so there's still an area of the ambassador where I'm safe to attack. If you do this incorrectly, you won't be able to attack the boss, and it's going to be a bad time. I still have a good 30 seconds left here, and the boss is only 45,000 damage away from the phase point. I'm going to use Blood Tendrils, I'm going to use a stun on the Black Hole, which is going to reset my Bladed Dive cooldown, and then once I get back to the boss fight, I'm going to use my Zaros Godsword Special to finish the job. All in all, this is an extremely fast, easy one cycle at the Ambassador. Okay, I think that's everything. This video was really requested by a couple people, and I really hope that those who needed a hand found this video helpful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything at all, you're welcome to place it in the comment section down below, and outside of that, best of luck fighting the Ambassador. Ambassador.